Welcome back to the Remit Up Racing Show with our second episode of the 2019 racing season. My name is Jay Houselander. I hope you subscribe, and if you want a, a notification, just type uh, race in the comments below. Today, our three exciting guests are uh, Corey Horner, 2018 Oscar Modified Champion, Jordan Sims from the APC Series, and Jordan Sponsor from uh, Stuff Lubricants. Our, our show today is sponsored and brought to you by Stuff Lubricants. How are you today, Corey? I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Good, good. Now, uh, the first first question is before I, we get right into it. How did how did you get into uh, into racing? Uh, I got into racing when I was uh, about thirteen or fourteen uh, because uh, my uncle Dave Horner he did it for years, and uh, he was getting his daughter into it, my cousin and. Uh, uh, my dad asked if I wanted to do it, and I said, sure. So we uh, built our first uh, four-cylinder Chevette. Um, and one question that I would say is not odd, but when I ask everybody every time we see it on your shirt, why 79H? Um, well, uh, I ended up uh, switching to 79 um, a few years back when we went to uh, race at Flamborough, there used to be uh, another 89 when I was running that number. And uh, my uncle Dave ran number 79 for forever. So we thought we would, uh, you know, just kind of honor him and run his number. And, and I ended up getting my first ever heat win in the car once I put that number on. So I thought it was, you know, must have been lucky. And I thought uh, I might as well stick with it. And they say you're in the Oscar, Oscar, Oscar Modified Series. What attracts you to that, that, that series, and how, did, how long have you been behind the wheel with that series? Uh, I believe this will be my fifth or sixth season now uh, behind the wheel. Um, what attracted me to the series the most was, like, the, the cost and the speed. Uh, you know, uh, at the time, I had a 602 motor in my limited late model that I was running at uh, Peterborough Speedway, and... Uh, uh, I was able to sell my chassis and, and pick up a modified chassis and just drop the motor in and, and away I went. And here we are, you know, five years later, uh, still having fun. And like I say, last year you, you were the 2018 champion. This year we're in a, tough, a little bit tougher year and it's always hard to repeat no matter what sport you're in. Yeah. But can you talk a little bit about... Like you say, last year's championship and what that meant, and like you say, this season, what the struggles have been? Um, yeah, well, uh, definitely uh, winning the championship was always something that I've wanted to do, you know. Uh, you you want to do it once, you, you know, no matter what anybody says. We're there every weekend. We want to win every race we can, but uh, you, you still want to, at the end of the day, you know, if you win every race, you want to be the champ as well. Uh, so that felt really good, and uh, definitely this year, you know, we've, as a team, made a few mistakes, you know. Uh, uh, we've had a few disqualifications now, which have probably put us out of the points, uh, and, and that, too, definitely makes you appreciate uh, those times where, you know, you can put together that good season and, and, and come out on top. And so far this season, like I say, two disqualifications, can you tell us what, the, what happened there? Uh, yeah, well, the the first one, uh, I don't even, I, you know, I don't know myself. We can't, I can't really talk about that. Uh, that one, uh, this past one was just the team error. Uh, somehow we ended up with a tire on the car that we used last year. It was still on a rim and somehow ended up on the car probably when we were scaling it. And, and you know, it was just a, a stupid mistake uh, that would, you know, you would never expect to happen. But uh, unfortunately it did, you know, and it was our fault. So. Uh, well, you know, there's nothing we can do about it now, and uh, unfortunately, we will just move on from there. And short track racing, it's not like it's not like what we watch on Sundays with NASCAR, million dollar budgets and uh, a crew of twenty people checking everything, nut and bolt, and everything. Yeah. On them. So mistakes do happen. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, and we're just now switching to the EC31. So you know, I mean, the tires. It's not like it's a different. If you're talking a three versus a two on the on the side of the tire, right? So. Uh, again, I don't know how or who or what. It doesn't matter. It, it, you know, it happens. So, yeah, we'll, we'll move on to the next race. And that's something that as soon as, it, like I say, you don't want to be DQ, but like I say, if it happens, it's something you just got to brush off and wait for next week, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and in, in the end, like I've always said, you know, we don't really race for points. We're there to win uh, every race we can. You know, so uh, being, you know, a little further behind in the points is not something that's going to uh, 
affect us. You know, we're still going to go out and we're still going to win races and do the best we can. And then that, that's the next question is why, like, so why, why get behind that wheel and why do what you do, like, say, as a, I guess, a weekend warrior? Uh, well, you know, I think you just, you grow up, you, you know, it becomes a party. You do it for so long and it's just become something you love. You know, it's, you, you don't just do it on the weekends. You do it every week, you know, every day when you come home, you, you're spending time in the shop, you know, it, it becomes a, a part of your life and, you know, it, it's, it's just fun. It's something to do, you know, something to something to have fun on the weekends and spend time with your family. You know, it's, uh, it's not just one person and, you know, it's definitely a good way to bring family together for sure. And that, that's one thing I noticed when we were talking off air and you say your car's down at your dad's garage where you guys do the work. It's something I find no matter where I'm in Northern Ontario or where I am and go to a lot of the tracks in Northern Michigan and also layered just down the east of Sault Ste. Marie. And biggest thing is it's family and, yeah. A lot of sports involve family, but not like racing. It surely brings families together, and not just on the week race day, but seven days a week, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, and it just for me in general, and from what I know, it's it's every like my my uncle, my dad, you know, brothers, cousins, you know, it doesn't matter. And then even the racing community itself, you, you become a family, you know, you know, everybody like just this week, we, we lost a, a fellow member, John Harper, you know, God bless him. Uh, you know, he, he was a great guy that we loved racing against, you know, so it's not just, you know, the family support that you get at home. It's the family that you make at the track as well. And when it comes to family and not to put you on the spot, who's a bit your biggest critic? <laughs> Well, for the long time, it was probably my dad. That, that would be, yeah, I would say he'd probably be the hardest. Uh, I, I I know he's not watching, so I'll tease him. I say he's uh, gotten a little softer in his old age. You don't harass me as much no more, but uh, that definitely my dad for sure. Now, is, that, is that in the garage and on the track or mostly just from the track? Uh, uh, both, yeah, definitely both. And when I was younger, for sure, a lot in the garage, for sure. I, you know, we definitely a lot of a lot of fights between me and dad, for sure. But nothing uh, we can't shrug off. You know, it's uh, again, it's it's family, right? You know, we that's what we do. We can yell and swear at each other, and at the end of the day, we're we're still best friends. You know. And next next year, two thousand eighteen championship. What's probably one of the biggest moments so far with your racing career? Oh, geez, uh, probably that or just uh, being able to win races at, at tracks that, you know, uh, that I've never won at before. One of my goals, I guess, in my racing would be to, you know, win a race at, at every track that I've got a chance to race at, you know. So there's still a few that I and I'm talking main events, too, you know, not just the qualifiers. Um so there's still a few tracks that I've been to that I've yet to win that main event that, uh, you know, that's kind of a, a mini goal that I've set for myself. So, you know, last year picking up a feature win at Sunset was definitely pretty high on my bucket list. I've been trying for very many years, so that uh, that definitely was a pretty good moment. No, and it's not against any of the tracks, but if you prefer to race one certain track, what track would that probably be? Uh, right, it, I would always say, uh, well, at one time it might have been Barry Speedway when it was around, but right now, and, and probably even still when Barry was around, I'd say Peterborough Speedway, just because of the speed you get out of that track. Yeah, it, it is a it is a fast track, and and it's it's fun to race at. And it's something I always put drivers on the spot. Um, not not just the Oscar series, but if you're if you're in charge of the series, is there any one rule you would want to change? Without getting yourself in trouble. With any one rule without getting in trouble, uh, I don't know. I think it'd be cooler to uh, see our our cars with uh, 604 crate motors uh, stay at the 2600 pounds instead of the 602s. You know, have that little bit extra horsepower and stay the same weight, and uh, I think it would be really fast and put on an awesome show. Now, if you had the chance, and I, a couple of weeks ago, I sat with a bunch of drivers here from Sault Ste. Marie. Yeah, it's called Hayden Speedway. hasn't been around since 1973, but they used to. Have, they had a bunch of. They were all the drivers. They were probably in their 70s and 80s, and th they had the old mods that had the shift right between the legs and the like. You say everything was right between your legs. Have you ever had a chance to drive one of those? 
No, definitely, definitely not. I mean, I've even s seen some dirt cars where that stuff run be runs between your legs with the drive shaft and everything, and I think those guys are crazy having that. But uh, it's something like dirt, you know, that that's also something I'd love to try to get in maybe a big block modified or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, no, I've never driven anything like that. And like you say, that's nerve wracking. And we took my mother-in-law to the track for the first time this weekend up here. And, and she, my, my, my brother races, so she was a nervous wreck for my brother racing. But like if she was just a nervous wreck watching. So like you say, if you were to put that all that between like say right underneath you, six inches below you, below you, it's something that uh, more than adrenaline that you already have with the, the car you drive, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and the safety, you know, it's came such a long way with these cars. It's been incredible with the full containment seats and the Hanses and everything, you know. So just that one extra added thing of between your legs, it's why. Let's, you know, let's get rid of that, right? But uh, Exactly. But they're still entertaining. Like I watch them, they go into – they go turn left every time, and that one wheel is actually right off the ground, and it's just it's just amazing to watch them ride, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely, they're very cool to watch. Now, when when you aren't racing, what are, what what do you do? Um, well, I would either be working on my race car or what I like to do, uh, which I did yesterday. I went and watched the Super Dirt Car Series uh, at Cornwall Speedway. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of dirt and those big block modified, and I love to watch those cars. So to get around to some of the tracks that I've never been to before, you know, in the States and travel around. That's, that's what I usually like to do. And like you say, you'd love to jump into a, like say a dirt car just to get that experience. Oh yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I, I'll race anything. If anybody needs a driver, late model, mini style, I don't care. I'm uh, every day of the week. If you want me to race, I'm racing. I, I'll race a shopping cart. I love racing. I'll race. Oh, we, we have, we have a, uh, I think he's a 21 year old here in the Sioux and, he, he races a Camaro here, like say on asphalt. But the last two seasons, he's been running down Merritt. That's about four hours down into Michigan, and and he raced dirt more or less Friday nights on dirt, Saturday or Sunday on on asphalt. And the I use the Americans didn't understand. He drove dirt like he did asphalt, and he still ended up second in the standings. And they're saying it just it's it's like sports to try to cross over. It's a totally different uh, animal, isn't it? Yeah, well, unfortunately, I, I haven't got to try it yet. I mean, like I said, it's definitely something I have to do. I have to get in a dirt car and and try that out. So, um, but yeah, I can I can imagine it's not easy to go back and forth from Friday, Saturday, dirt to asphalt. I mean, sometimes it's hard enough to just going from open wheel to a late model. So from dirt to asphalt, it's probably not easy. Now, are, are you uh, headed into, uh, like, say, into the seat this weekend, or what's your plans coming this weekend coming up? I haven't really decided yet this weekend. There's, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a race uh, to support the Woolner family uh, at Full Throttle Motor Speedway. Um, I have a younger cousin, uh, James Horner, who races late models. Uh, he's never gotten an opportunity to race there before, so, uh, you know, I think I might uh, maybe enjoy the weekend off and, uh, and give him a shot at it. And, and see how he can do behind the wheel. And not to create a rivalry, who's the better driver? Well, I definitely am right now, for sure. You know, I mean, uh, maybe if he sticks with it, he might he might outdrive me one day. But for sure, I say that I, I, I'm the better driver right now. <laughs> and with, with, with your years, of, like I say, you're still young, but with your years of, of, of racing, if a rookie was to climb into a seat today, what, 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 what some kind of advice would you give a, a new driver? Uh, just don't give up. You know, don't give up and never stop trying. You gotta, you gotta take that car to practice every chance you get. You know, if you can afford to take that car out on Thursday nights or Wednesdays, wherever your home track is, and and get as much seat time as you can. You know, and just just keep getting laps. You know, you you will get better. You just you gotta keep getting laps. Now the thing, like say fans, and no matter what track you go to, when they when they have, like say fan appreciation, or they come down, and lot some drivers don't like say, aren't the, the type to sit there with all the fans and everything else. But if a fan was seeing you for the first time, well, what is there something you could tell people out there about yourself? Oh man, uh, I love the fan appreciation. We had it this weekend. Um, uh, I let one kid sit in my car and, and, and all of a sudden every kid, I think, I think I had a hundred kids or more sitting in my car 
lining up to sit in there and seeing the smile on their faces, you know, it, it is just amazing. I love that feeling to be able to make them happy. And who knows, maybe one day they'll, they'll want to race themselves just because they got that opportunity to, to sit in the race car or maybe they'll get to go tell their friends, you know, that they got to do something cool. Like, uh, I, I love that part, the fan appreciation. I wish we did it more. I wish we did it every weekend. It, it's a great part of racing. Well, and it's something I know some tracks, like say, depending on where, where you are, it's go-kart summer, the new mini wedges now. Um, it's not like any other sport, um, like hockey or baseball, where you can just start at three or four years old. Because, again, even if it's a mini wedge or go-kart, you're putting an engine behind them, and it's something, like you say, it, it gets them in the car, they just get the feel. Yeah. There's Now, there, now I say more recently, the last couple of years, is there's something to – to get them into it to bring these young drivers up, right? Yeah, well, there, there's a lot of kart, uh, go-kart programs starting up, you know, um, to help get kids involved, right? And, uh, you know, the, you definitely want to keep them involved because you got to keep more people coming out uh, you, to keep the sport alive. And, and, and it's something, no matter what track you go to, we, we still have – people who are in their 50s, 60s, and even 70s still racing on, on, on the weekends. But we always need that, that, that new young blood to, uh, to, to push you guys, the older guys, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to try and uh, make us go faster. Uh, they, don't, they, they, they can slow down a little bit. I mean, I'm still chasing some guys myself. So, But, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you always want new competition. You never, want to, you never want it to be easy. It's always more fun when there's new competition and, and somebody to race against. And you're learning something every new every, every every week, no matter how how long you've been racing, right? Oh, of course. Every weekend, we're if you're not trying something new or doing something different, you know. My uncle, like I said, he reads, he researches, he you know. We try different setups every week to make that car faster. Sometimes we go slower, but I mean, you, sometimes that's what it takes to to make the car faster in the end. And one thing, one thing I've noticed is, is a lot of times in most sports, you say if it's not broken, don't fix it. But the thing about, about uh, racing is that doesn't matter. Someone's always like say twerking or doing something, changing something in in the uh, in the car, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean, very seldom do we pull off the track, whether it be after practice or qualifying, and not adjust something on the car. I mean. You, you're, you're never perfect. There's no way that your car is ever perfect. I think my uncle told me this quote. He said he read in a book, you know, until you're going wide open through the corners, there's always more to gain. Uh, I wish I could tell you who said it. I don't know. You know, he, like I said, he does a lot of reading, but uh, I love that because I, I believe it's true. And we're not going wide open through those corners yet. So when we are, then we'll stop trying stuff. And when it comes to, to racing, who are, who, do you, who are the, not rivals, but who are the guys you really like to race against every week? Um, well, there's any, anybody in, in Oscar right now is great to race against, honestly. Uh, I feel our whole series is, is um, a great group of drivers. I mean, you, you know, you're not seeing a whole bunch of people drive stupidly every weekend and wreck a lot of cars. I mean, everybody gets along in the pits fairly well. <laughs> Uh, you know, and they're fairly friendly. If you need parts, you know, like you can usually go up to any driver and they're willing to help you out. So I really wouldn't say there's anybody I wouldn't race against in the modifieds right now. And, and that goes back to uh, the, the family thing. And it's not against, I'm a hockey guy, or like you say, growing up. Um, but it, it, it's not, racing's not the same as if, if you, something uh, part, something goes wrong in hockey or any other sport, you don't walk into the other dress room and say, can I borrow it? Or yeah. here you can walk in. You can walk to the trailer and say, "Hey, Corey, I need this. Can I borrow it?" And ninety-nine yeah. percent of the time, it's it's go right ahead, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're there to to beat the guys on the track. We don't want to beat them because they couldn't make it out there. You know what I mean? You, again, like I said, and even if you don't win, at the end of the day, if you're racing side by side with a guy for thirty or forty laps and you finish second to him, that was a great race. You know, it doesn't matter. Like you want to beat those guys or race those guys on the track, not in the pits. Now, the question I always ask drivers is: uh, it takes a lot of people to get the seventy-nine H on the track. Who, who would you like to thank? Um, again, uh, I'd like to thank my dad. 
I, I got started in racing because of him. He hauls me to the track. I mean, so far this year, he's bought most of my tires. Uh, you know, he does everything he can for me. You know, I don't own a truck, uh, you know, so he, like I said, he hauls me to the track. Uh, my uncle Andy, he pay, you know, he pays for my fuel. He lets me use his trailer. He does a setup on my car. You know, my cousins who are with me all the time in the shop. I mean, like, I definitely couldn't do it without them. Uh, and, and the couple sponsors I have, um, again, family sponsor, uh, Custom Forming. Um, and then uh, we got Bondsman Brothers Concrete Pumping and, and uh, Brock Wolf with Remax Real Estate and Menismore. Um, if it wasn't for those people, you know, doing things like that, like, you know, just a simple buying me a tire or, or fuel or, or just driving me to the track. I, I wouldn't even be racing. So I uh, definitely couldn't do it without all those people. And, and one question, and not to ask exactly, but when it comes to racing a, a, a modified, if someone was to get into, instead of starting at lower, like say four cylinder, if they were to jump into the modified division, cost wise, what is somebody probably looking at something in, in that division for the Oscar series? Um, well, that depends on what you're talking about, like how you want to go about it. So if, you know, are you buying a car, you know, you don't have your car or whatever, um, you know, you can pick up pretty good chassis rolling, you know, for the five to 7,000, you know, in Canada or across the border. Um, you know, and if you wanted to go the brand new route, a brand new crate motor, I think are about five grand now. So, you know, about 10 to 12 grand, you can probably have a chassis and a motor. And then the rest, you know, that all depends on who you are and what you know. You know, we know how to do our own setup and, and build a lot of our own stuff. So we don't pay anybody to do that for us. If you're having to pay people to set up your car and, and build your, you know, doors and bumpers and all that, you can get into spending, you know, 50 grand or more. But I would say myself personally on a level, like I maybe spend 15 grand in a season, you know, because like I said, most of my work is done myself. It, my costs are strictly fuel and tires and the money to get to the track. So, and, yeah. And, and with, and with you, guys, you guys based in Southern Ontario and us in Northern Ontario, it's the one advantage you have. We do have a lot of tracks in, in, uh, in four or five hours. We have, I'm just thinking uh, one, two, three, three, four tracks within two hours of us. Um, but if you were to go two hours within Southern Ontario where you are, you guys have a lot of lot of tracks that you can, you can uh, if it's not just Oscar, that you guys can compete at, can't you? Yeah, well, I mean, so just right where I'm sitting right now, I mean, I got Peterborough Speedway's 40 minutes away, Sunset's an hour and 15, Kawartha, if it was open, is 40. I mean, Delaware is only two and a half hours. Flamborough is an hour and 15. Sobble's three. Varney's two and a half, you know. And then there are some tracks in New York that only take, you know, the four and five hours to get for me to go race my modified. Ah, there's all kinds of them that are that are very close as well. So there's lots of racing around here that, that you can go to. Other than dirt, last question. Other than dirt, is there anything... Like say with the modifies, but is there anything else you'd like to try when it comes it comes to racing? Um, actually, road course is something. Just like I mean, I watch Formula One cars, and to see that, like, I know I probably could never drive one as fast as them, but just to even go make a lap or two laps in a car like that, to me, would be unbelievable. Like, uh, I, just, just the scenery, the beautiful tracks they go to is unbelievable. That something like that would be very cool to do. Now, would you do? And I, I don't know this, but at Toronto Sports Park where they do a road course, but do they ever have the, your type of cars at that at that track? Uh, no, I've never really heard of like modifieds being on a road course, but. Uh, uh, knowing some some stuff about road course cars, uh, I've been tempted myself uh, to switch my car around on an off week because uh, I'm six minutes away from Mossport here, so they have their test and tune days. I've been tempted to you know switch some control arms and stuff and take her out there for a few laps, but uh, we haven't done it yet. Just just to say you've done it, right? Yeah, just to say I've done it, or you know who knows? Maybe if it's if it's easy enough and possible enough, maybe throw a road course race on the Oscar schedule over here at Mossport, right? You never know. That might be a cool thing. 
And again, just uh, one one more. Sorry, is is about uh, when it comes to getting you prepared for the next race and to to be like you say to be successful. What do you think you guys have to do to be successful in the next next race? You you, you sit behind the seat. Well, to me, like I guess we approach it like every weekend is almost it's a new year. You're you know so. I'm checking my hubs, I'm greasing my hubs, I'm bleeding my brakes, you know, make the waters full, the, you know, every nut and bolt's checked, no gaskets are leaking, you know, it's got a new setup in it for that track that I'm going to, you know, and I make sure that's all done prior to Saturday morning. I'm not waking up Saturday morning and making sure all that's done, you know, that I'm making sure that stuff's done ahead of time so that uh, so when Saturday comes, we're ready to race. And I just, like, we keep on saying last question, but people have been making comments down below. Is the track we were at just just recently? Is there's quite a bit of carnage this weekend. And as a as a driver, if you're in the lead or you're in front of that carnage and then brought back to caution restart, how frustrating is that? And how do you get it back, mentally get back into the green again? Um, well, for me, I think it's just experience. I mean, I've been doing it long enough. Uh, you know that caution's coming. And you know you're always going to be around stuff that you don't want to be around. So you just got to be mentally prepared for that all the time and, and really not think about it when it happens. And are you the type of driver, if it's your fault, you will tap the roof and admit it? Uh, maybe not at first, but yeah, usually, uh, you know, you know, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an adult and, you know, I can admit when I'm wrong, uh, you know, and I'm wrong quite often. I mean, I'm human. We all make mistakes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like I said, maybe not at first if I don't see it that way, but yeah, in the end, if I was wrong, I'll tell you. And, and what athlete, like I say, being an athlete, what athlete does admit they're wrong during their, during their event, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like you said, like I said, we're, we're all human. We all, we all make mistakes. We all screw up. Uh, and you gotta be able to accept it and move on. Well, Corey, I can, uh, uh thank you enough. And, um, Hopefully we can do this later on in the uh, later on in the season, and uh, when you're moved up in the standings, and we'll, we'll talk soon. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back with a uh, uh, Jordan Sims uh, of the APC series. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you, Corey. Yeah. You have a good day. Uh, just waiting for uh, Jordan Sims to join us. Uh, if there's anybody who has any questions, just let us know. Remember, today's uh, show is brought to you by Stuff Lubricants. Um, you can go to stuff.ca. Uh, Stuff Lubricants is the sponsor of Jordan Sims, uh, the driver who's uh, going to be on the show very, very soon. And we will ask Jordan a few questions about his win on um, – the opening uh, day of the APC 2019 series and how he's been doing uh, since then at the last uh, four races. And we will uh, talk to you very soon. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Thank you.
unfortunately, uh, tonight's show, uh, Jordan um, cannot make uh, tonight's show, so we'll have to reschedule at a later date. Um, we'll try to fit him in on a July uh, 8th show when we have um, we have uh, Jeremy um, Kiranuski of the 1J Modified that races um, in, uh, in northern Michigan in the Midwestern United States, and also his uh, his sponsor that uh, is a new sponsor, Francisco Viola, who's a Luca uh, Luca Distilleries of late model and also late model and um, modified driver Dustin Jackson on July eighth at. Uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I hope uh, everybody can tune in and I apologize for uh, Jordan not being able to make it tonight. 